Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of World Talks here on TVP World. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. Please join me and my guests on this exclusive interview. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Poland and Ukraine is generating significant diplomatic interest. Now, this will be the first visit by an Indian head of government to Poland in 45 years and comes at a time when India's role in global diplomacy, particularly concerning the Russia-Ukraine conflict, is under scrutiny. Joining us today on TVP World to look at the implications of his trip and what it could mean for peace efforts in Ukraine is Major General Sashi B. Astana, international strategic and military analyst. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Uh, thank you. Pleasure speaking to you and your viewers. So can you tell us what, how significant is Mali's visit to Poland Ukraine, considering this long gap between high-level diplomatic exchanges? Uh, firstly, the Central and Eastern Europe, uh, even as to while it was mentioned, that is the seat of power in a manner that uh, when we talk of uh, this has been the place where perhaps uh, big power live rivalry has been seen uh, in in Cold War era, number one. Number two, uh, even in the earlier uh, strategic uh, context, it used to be the part of the heartland. And uh, it was known that heartland, whoever controls heartland, uh, controls the rest of the world. So. Eastern and Central Europe is important, and Poland uh, and Ukraine both happen to be important uh, countries as far as the Eastern Europe is concerned. That's number one. Secondly, uh, this is the 70th uh, year of uh, diplomatic relations with Poland, and uh, this is the first visit of a prime minister after 45 years, and we have a fair amount of uh, Indian diaspora. I think 25,000 people are there, 5,000 students are there. We have very good historical bonds with Poland in a manner uh, that uh, during Second World War in 1940s, uh, we had about 6,000 uh, uh, people who came to India. They were given refuge in India. They were given uh, sanctuary in India. And uh, 1,000 children uh, were in the princely state of Jamnagar, uh, from where uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, hails from, that is in Gujarat. And uh, I am given to understand that there is something called as Maharaja Square in Poland, and there are also, uh, he is also called as Good Maharaja, and uh, there are a number of schools. And uh, the ambassador of Poland in India is also uh, from uh, one of the schools there. Uh, I'm, uh, we also look at uh, the trade partnership. Now, uh, Poland is the sixth largest economy in the Eastern Europe, uh, in, in Europe and perhaps the largest in Eastern Europe. Uh, we would certainly, uh, India would certainly like to engage uh, with Poland in a manner that uh, uh, it is a gateway to Europe. If we are looking at the India, Middle East, European economic corridors, uh, then it becomes the gateway uh, to the rest of the Europe as well. Uh, similarly, we are also looking at a uh, whole lot of uh, other initiatives, including the defense initiatives. Uh, we are there are certain joint ventures in in progress uh, there is also uh, i would put it this way that uh, uh, some kind of training and military cooperation we also had taken some equipment earlier like armored recovery vehicles uh, and uh, some components of the aircraft and helicopters so you see uh, this partnership with poland is a all-rounded or a well-rounded partnership now coming on to the Ukraine part of it with the question, the second part of the question which you asked. Uh, see, uh, we have, again, very good relations with Ukraine. And India, in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, has taken an impartial position, wherein uh, we have given a message of peace to Russia. And I'm sure a similar message will get conveyed to Ukraine too. Uh, because a peace between Russia and Ukraine uh, is in the world interest and it is also in the Indian interest. Uh, also, uh, we would like to engage with Ukraine more in a manner that we have a certain, uh, I would say, um, earlier also uh, partnership, trade partnership in terms of sunflower oil, in terms of certain defense equipment. We had T-80 tanks coming from Ukraine. Uh, so uh, the partnership is bilateral, the visit is bilateral and it is on the invitation of President Zelensky. 
when he met Prime Minister Modi, he had invited him to come there. And Prime Minister Modi had promised that he will come there. So I think it has it should be seen in that in that context. Back to you. All right. You mentioned that uh, India really stays impartial when it comes to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But given India's delicate balance between West and Russia, uh, do you think that this visit might signal a slight shift in India's foreign policy, or do you think uh, it will kind of pursue the same impartiality going forward? Uh, I think it will enhance the uh, idea of uh, the impartiality uh, even more, because uh, Prime Minister Modi had a few weeks back uh, uh, gone to Russia, and that time also he uh, coupled that uh, with Austria. So therefore, uh, there is an Indian interest in the eastern part of Europe. So uh, it was Austria and uh, and uh, Russia at that point of time, and now it is Poland and Ukraine uh, when uh, when he is going today. Uh, uh, so what we are looking at is uh, that uh, if whatever message was given in Russia, in my opinion, I we really don't know because no statements have come out so far. But uh, my sense is that a similar message will be given in Ukraine also, although that's a separate issue. Although India is in no uh, mood to mediate at this stage because nobody has asked us to mediate. Uh, and uh, also uh, the uh, the question of uh, and perhaps the geopolitics uh, with the Ukraine offensive getting into Russia, uh, they may not be, perhaps both sides are in a tug of war kind of situation uh, wherein uh, both are trying to improve their position on the battleground uh, so that they can get better position as far as negotiation tables are concerned. Uh, because I think uh, Ukraine is also looking at uh, the American election, perhaps by November, uh, whatever best they can do, they would like to do. Uh, so this is the kind of environment in which Prime Minister Modi is going. Uh, but uh, I'm sure uh, the message would certainly be of peace uh, and uh, not continuing war. Because even if, let's say, hypothetically, the war continues, uh, nobody is going to win. We are very clear on that. Uh, you can war game in any manner what you want. Uh, the fact is, no side will be a clear winner uh, in this particular uh, war, and both sides have uh, every both sides have lot to lose. Uh, the question is, uh, who can lose less? Uh, that is the only competition, perhaps. Right. And speaking of the conflict, there's uh, well less and less venues in which the West can has see eye to eye on with Russia. I think India is one of the few countries that still has uh, strong diplomatic ties between both countries. Do you see going forward India playing this more significant role in facilitating peace talk? As again, like we mentioned, there's less and less country that would probably able to uh, conduct it. Uh, certainly, if both the countries want it. See, the question is, India will not like to. Uh, get into a lecturing mode unnecessarily if both the, both countries are, are not in a mood to uh, go for negotiations. Uh, the first step in any negotiation is that both countries must agree to agree. As of now, that stage has not been crossed. I don't think both countries are in a mood to agree. So once they agree to agree, uh, then only the next step can be taken. So India is ready uh, with to to prosper or to help uh, both sides coming to peace uh, in whatever uh, role uh, both sides want to see us. If they want us to see in a mediatory role, uh, then uh, I think uh, I, I don't think I don't visualize that India will back out. Right. And as we speak, we also know that the defense minister of India is currently in the United States. Do you think the two visits coinciding at the same time have anything to do with what we're talking about, or do you perceive that as an isolated incident? Uh, no, that is, uh, see, we uh, have a strategic partnership with the United States, and uh, we also have two plus two dialogues with the United States, that is the, uh, the defense ministry and foreign ministry. and. Uh, uh, United States is appearing to be, is coming out to be uh, one of the largest defense partner. Uh, in fact, after uh, Russia, uh, depending upon one or two deals, sometimes it is France, sometimes it is United States. Uh, so we are uh, into a lot of uh, import of defense equipment from America. And I'm sure uh, the visits of the defense minister uh, is in context of that. I don't think uh, that could be linked uh, with Ukraine at this point of time. All right. So 
Well, when we see that uh, Modi is going to go to Ukraine after visiting Poland, and that comes only soon after his meeting with Putin, do you think that all these things kind of coming to, like back to back would impact India's relationship with the Western allies? Uh, see, India's relationship with Western allies perhaps now have stabilized. Earlier, uh, India was criticized quite a bit on uh, 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 continuing relations with Russia, uh, which uh, have been historical, uh, which have been quite a valued partnership. And uh, the relationship between Russia and India has stood the test of time. Because all other relationships, as we, as we see, have seen up, uh, seen up and down, uh, like even our relationship with the United States. Uh, when Pakistan, there was a military dictatorship in Pakistan, United States was supporting that military dictatorship against India. And they were equipping Pakistan against India. So, uh, but now uh, the situation has changed. And uh, with the China threat and all other uh, geopolitical events, and perhaps uh, the natural partnership between the two, the oldest democracy and the largest democracy, uh, perhaps uh, the points of congruence have increased uh, much more uh, than the points of divergences. So we have seen all other relationships seeing up and down, but a relationship between India and Russia has been quite constant, number one. Number two, Russia has been the largest uh, defense uh, partner with India. Uh, and they gave us defense technology at a time when nobody else was ready to give. The West was not ready to give us defense technology. And therefore, uh, for us to become self-reliant in defense, we are getting stuck very badly. So if that be so, then uh, that kind of relationship, obviously that cannot be strapped. Although India is very well conscious that we should balance out with every uh, relationship with everyone and also diversify uh, our defense dependence on anyone. So therefore, uh, we are now looking at all other defense partners as well, whether it is France, whether it is America, whether it is Israel, all kinds of uh, defense partners. And uh, we, so therefore, the share of the Russian equipment in India is reducing and the share of other partners is increasing because a diversification is necessary uh, in terms of conflicts uh, when, when it happens. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, we are also conscious of the growing uh, closeness between Russia and uh, China. But then, so far, uh, Russia has uh, ensured uh, that that doesn't come our way uh, in terms of uh, the, any, any friction in our relationship. Uh, and uh, Russia has generally been silent on any aspect uh, pertaining to India-China or any friction between India-China. So, <laughs> apparently, uh, that is the kind of relationship which uh, India had with Russia and continues to have with Russia. And therefore, uh, I don't think uh, there is any reason for anyone to be concerned about that relationship. As far as the war is concerned, uh, I talked of the inter uh, impartial uh, stance. Uh, this impartial stance holds good for everybody. See, uh, the whole world, uh, the Western world did criticize Russia, rightly so, uh, for the invasion into Ukraine. But then the fact is, America also invaded Iraq. Uh, to destroy their uh, uh, um, weapons of mass destruction, which did not exist. Uh, but that time, perhaps the media was not that strong. Uh, perhaps the opposition was also not that strong. The China and Russia were not in that strong uh, situation. And perhaps uh, the America could uh, walk away without any criticism. But then the fact is, uh, uh, Russia is not the first country to invade and uh, uh, not perhaps the last country too. Uh, similarly, uh, America has not been also the holy cow and nor has been NATO. Uh, so uh, when we see uh, situations outside Europe and we see it impartially because the world also exists outside Europe and outside Western world. Right, uh, definitely so a perhaps, lot of moving pieces uh, going into this and becoming a very nuanced situation. Thank you so much for helping us breaking that all down. Our guests have to Major General Sashi Bia Astana from International Strategic and a Military Analyst. Thank you so much for being with us on TV World. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And with that, we conclude this edition of our interview. But for more news, update and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.